What does it take to translate or to transmute a belief into a knowing? I would say that has to be direct experience, be it with your physical vessel or by experiencing it with your consciousness. Direct experience, as far as I can tell, is the only thing that actually equals knowing. But here's the rub. Direct experience in this life means we're going to be taking it in, for the most part, via <clears throat> excuse me, the vehicle of our five senses. Well, as one example, the eyes can play tricks on you. The eyes can be fooled. Any of the senses that we have can be fooled or misinterpreted. It's an interesting thing. And from where I sit, not a real good interesting thing. Because it lends itself to what I've been saying to people for a long time about how extremely manipulatable we are. And for whether it's beings outside of this world or beings in this world, meaning other humans, the ability to manipulate the human senses isn't all that difficult. It's really not that challenging to fool the eyes. There's a picture on the internet of, it looks like it's a jug. It's, a, it's just a drawing. It's a jug. And there's an image on the jug. And I find it strange that the image itself, you can see two things in the image. For adults, for the most part, when you look at the image, you're going to see two lovers. You're going to see a, a man and a woman in an embrace Yet for the eyes of the child, what they immediately see is nine dolphins. And it takes a minute for the adult mind to see through the lovers to see the dolphins. Kind of interesting how that works. And it lends itself to how our eyes can be fooled, how our senses can be fooled. And to such a large degree, it is our five senses that we have to Interpret the world, if you catch my meaning. Meaning sight, touch, taste, sense. Or sight, touch, smell, sound, and feeling. Or, I don't know, I'm having a brain fart. I don't know what five of them off the top of my head. But they're all easily fooled. Like you put your, there's this thing where if you put your finger in hot water and put one finger in cold water and then pull them out and put it in lukewarm water, though even the feeling can be fooled. Our senses are not a surefire way of interpreting the world. What we see, what we hear... What we feel isn't necessarily real or true, if that makes sense. So how do we actually obtain a knowing? A knowing that's so deep within the recesses of your being, the core of your being, that it will never be taken away from you. I say that's through direct experience. But the contradiction there is, if it's a direct experience in this life, and the senses can be fooled, how valid is that direct experience to creating a knowing, right? may not be entirely true, but it, I think there's some, something to that. But when you have a direct experience with your consciousness or with your mind's eye, I guess you could say, that kind of changes things, or so I thought. Because... When you're not in your body and you are sheer consciousness and awareness having a direct experience, how could that not be true, right? Until you start realizing that there are forces out there, whatever they are, whether it's entities, aliens, our own, higher self, or whatever it might be, whatever forces these things are, that can fool us, immature, infantile, humans. The mind can trick us. The mind can absolutely play tricks on us. And it can be really easy to believe the things the mind finds and dredges up. I mean, hell, we're mind-based beings, meaning our perception of the reality that we live in is generally experienced through the vehicle that we know of the mind, the psyche. The awareness, the consciousness, all of that kind of melds into one thing in this example, or this thing I'm explaining. 
So how in the hell can we actually know anything? And by that, I'm referring to higher order truths, not one plus one equals two, five plus five equals 10, not that kind of stuff. I'm talking about the search for answers for the human condition, the human experience, why we're here, what it's for, concepts like higher self, source of it all, God, source self, or any of these quote unquote, I don't know, esoteric or spiritually based concepts, precepts, or principles. How can we actually know? For me, and I really believe that this applies for most of the human species, the inward journey has been firewalled off. I can sit down with a mind that's calm and as clear as I can clear it and sit there and meditate, close my eyes, or do zazen and have my eyes opened. And essentially what I get is calm. They tell us that the inward journey is the source. They, who the hell is they? I don't know, the spiritual yogis, gurus, whatever. They tell us that the inward journey is the source of all things for us. That you go inward to find the answers. You go inward to contact or communicate your higher self with your higher self. You go inward to go outward to, quote unquote, touch the face of God or, you know, experience source itself. Yet every time I've ever tried to do that, it's like I could never pierce that veil. I went to... Tassajara Zen Mountain Center is a Buddhist monastery in uh, the Carmel Valley of California and spent a handful of months there specifically for the purpose of piercing the veil of the inward journey and sat Zazen for a long time and um, never really got anything but calm and I found it to be very frustrating. So if the inward journey is truly the only way for the human to know, for the human to truly have direct experience with these types of things that I'm referring to in this monologue, Yet the veil is so tightly bound and it's, I don't know, you can't find a way to penetrate the veil. You don't have a sledgehammer big enough to break it down or a knife sharp enough to cut through it. How does one pierce the veil? The veil that has been placed over us to prevent us from knowing or finding the real truth. How does one do that? And quite frankly, I'm not sure that any human has my answer. Maybe they do. Maybe they do. Maybe they do. But I'm also in a place in this world where I don't trust 98% of the people out there. Because people lie. People deceive. People manipulate. They have agendas. And, well, that's just the reality of the world we live in. And bitching about it. I'm not bitching about it. I'm just saying this is, this is the reality of the world we live in. Therefore, how do we have direct knowing? Trying to find your answers through other people will in many respects lead you astray and lead you down some pretty dark paths that are only going to be challenging and painful and challenge you on every level. Personally, I find this to be quite perplexing, somewhat frustrating, and <laughs> quite a conundrum. And since I've had the experiences I've had in my life with humans, I really find it hard to trust anybody. And I think that a lot of people are all steeped in their ego steeped in a lot of this new agey crap or steeped in this religious dogmatic crap and i really sometimes i tell myself i don't think anybody really knows i think that a lot of us find things that feel good that sound good that help us to make sense of the experience that maybe are conducive to or aligning with things that we may have a sense of but no real way to clarify quantify this is an interesting experience. Yeah, it definitely is. Still not a huge fan of it. So we get these senses, and they play tricks on us. They can be fooled. We have this mind that can definitely play tricks on us and be fooled. Hell, I've been in Phoenix for six months now, and to a large degree, I have very much been in isolation. Just haven't had a lot of money to go out and do a whole lot of things, and um, so I've basically just stayed to myself, stayed in my room, uh, when I was sharing a house with somebody. And uh, now that that's no longer the case, I'm in a hotel. I have been for about six weeks. And I've been completely isolated. And um, interestingly enough, I watched something on YouTube the other day and a genre of, in, of, of information that I never really take in. It was one of those prison things. I don't know. I just, I, I have such a, a feeling for my, my fellow humans that, you know, and I understand what it takes to destroy the mind and a lot of the people in prison. 
were severely abused and traumatized as kids and a lot of the behaviors that they exhibited in life are a byproduct of what they experienced as kids and I know what I went through as a kid and I feel grateful that I'm not in prison and I just kind of wanted to tap into that a little bit and see what these men said and this one was in particular about um, a place where there's lock up 23 hours a day and you get one hour out and I started listening to what these men were saying about those experiences and one of the things that they were saying is how the isolation really wreaks havoc on the mind and that it is um, almost torture and that when you are left and stuck with nothing but your thoughts oh that can be a very 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 challenging place to be when you have not a lot in the way of human contact and other stimuli other input other sensory input oh boy what a challenge that can be so I've been in this condition for about six months largely isolated um, and I see how the mind can even be such a battleground such a place of conflicting and opposing ideas, concepts, things of that nature. And I just said that to kind of quantify the fact that even the mind plays tricks on us. Therefore, from the perspective of the faculties that we have to interpret the world, all the five senses, logic, reason, feeling, intuition, la 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 la. How do we trust any of it? Seriously. How do you trust any of it? And it's just more of a rhetorical question that I'm asking myself. How do you trust any of this stuff? There's so much deception in this world. There, there's so much deception in this world that was purposely crafted for us to deceive us, to knock us off any path we may be on, to do as much as it can to prevent us from finding the truth, from experiencing the truth, and a lot of that has to do with how damaged a lot of people are, uh, how distrustful, that would be me, people are. So you could be standing in the face of the truth, and because you don't trust people, maybe, um, maybe all of a sudden they're sitting there with the truth and you don't recognize it as such because you don't trust them. That's another thing. Sometimes we can judge the sender of a message or the bringer of a message that may, who knows, maybe it could be true. But this ego mechanism we have, well, it judges the, the messenger. I'm kind of there now myself with uh, a very big message I've gotten in the last couple of days. A very interesting message I've gotten in the last couple of days. And then I found where the source of this information stemmed from. And I have a problem with the source. Up until I realized or found out where the source of the information was, or who the source of the information was, I was kind of really interested in what I was hearing. I was like, wow, this seems really plausible. And then I found who the source of this information was. And I'm just like, really? Are you kidding me? So now all the information that was, I was taking in is now all suspect. And it has brought me to this place where, how do we know? How do we really find what's true? Through the deception of the matrix that we're in, if it's really a matrix, the deception of our own human species, the deception of you know the spiritual war and all that other stuff. How in the hell do we ever actually know? I would certainly love to figure out a way to tear the veil off of the inward journey the same way that ayahuasca tore the veil off of my eyes. But I don't know how to do that. And as much ayahuasca as I have drank, as much San Pedro as I have ingested, as, much, as many mushroom journeys as I've gone on to try to expand my consciousness, pierce the veil, blah, 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 blah. I haven't managed to do it yet. When I ingest the entheogen and it fires up the old pineal gland and I'm able to launch out of the body or have these direct experiences, it's one thing. Yet, doubt creeps in because there's so much conflicting information out there. So, the path to truth, the path to direct knowing might not even be direct experience because of how easily fooled we can be and how easily fooled the senses are all the way up to and including the very mind that we have to perceive the world we live in I've reached a place in life where really all I want is two things number one money and not from greed, just so that I can survive in the world. 
just cover my basic needs and not have to worry about whether or not I'll have a place to live or sleep. Other than that, the only thing I want, I don't know, this is wrong because I want love like everybody else and blah, 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 blah. But on the grander scheme, the only other thing I really want in this life is the truth, to know the truth, the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help the truth. And I just find it so, so frustrating many times very disenchanting for me to know how obfuscated the truth has been, how strong the veil is, for instance, within me and the inward journey and in trying to find the truth, pierce the veil. I don't actually have any psychedelics right now to have a journey. And I'll be honest with you, <laughs> you don't always get what you want in those journeys. Sometimes you can go on a really deep journey and have lots of questions that you feel are like really legitimate and per pertinent to your life experience. And that if you could just find these answers that all of a sudden things would start clicking and being better and you'd, you'd start seeing, and you could go through 10 ceremonies and get a whole bunch of stuff, but never get the answer to what you're looking for. Never actually find the answer that you're seeking. <laughs> OD to the human experience, right? 